<clears throat> All right. Well, Fantasy Flight Games just released a sample deck for Game of Thrones the Card Game Second Edition, so I thought we'd take a quick look at it. Uh, I've read through it, and it seems like it's a Baratheon Greyjoy deck centered around kneeling your opponent's characters. I, I personally find it pretty interesting because I had a Lannister deck in the first edition of the game that was designed to do the exact same thing. Uh, so there's a lot of cards I know in, in the Baratheon deck that can make you kneel and take advantage of kneeling characters. So that I thought was going to be a no-brainer. That that I saw, saw, saw coming a mile away. Uh, I do think it's very interesting them teaming it with Greyjoy uh, where Greyjoy has a lot of cards that are really good at taking advantage of small fields of play. So let's take a look at the deck and see how it breaks down. Now the first thing to note, this will require three core sets. There are a couple of cards here like Melisandre, Robert Baratheon, Milk of the Poppy, that are three times. Uh, they're in there three times. So you'll definitely need three core sets to try this deck or a variation. So it uses the House Baratheon house card. You've got the Banner of the Kraken agenda. And remember what these agendas do. You can include, include, sorry, include non-loyal uh, Greyjoy cards in your deck. You must include at least 12 Greyjoy cards in your deck. Now, non-loyal means any card that does not have this little banner underneath their house sigil. So you couldn't include Robert Baratheon in something that has the the Baratheon banner agenda. Uh, so no Greyjoy card that has this little banner under it can be included in this deck. And they have to also include at least 12 Greyjoy cards. So the first plot card we come across is a Noble Cause. Reduce the cost of the first Lord or Lady character you marshal this round by two. 501 with 6 reserve. I think that's, that's overall a fairly good card. Very low initiative. Uh, and I could say we've played a couple games now, and the initiative is very important in determining where you go, because you sometimes you're going to want to go first, sometimes you're going to want to go last. Uh, the biggest thing is you very rarely want to be at the mercy of your opponents as to where you go. Uh, the next one, calling the banners, choose an opponent, gain one gold for each character that player controls. Another solid card that I think is just going to be in a lot of decks. Calm over Westeros. When revealed, name a challenge type. Until you reveal a new plot card, reduce the claim value on the attacking player's revealed plot card by one during challenges of that type in which you are the defending player. It's 5 3 1 with 6 reserve. This is a powerful card if used at just the right time. Um, I had it used on me in the last game we played at a very inopportune time. We were narrowing in on just we were finally looking at who was going to be the winner you know we were narrowing down we were all pretty close one person was starting to get uh, to get out ahead a little bit uh i was going to do some warfare challenges on that person and they played this card on me which essentially reduced my claim value to nothing so it was it was if you strategically it's very very powerful uh filthy accusations 441 six reserve when revealed choose and kneel the character so we're starting with that kneeling, which again with the Brathians can be very, very impactful. Uh, sneak attack five eleven two. You cannot initiate more than one challenge during the challenges phase. The reserve of five, guaranteeing you're going to go first. I don't think there's a plot card in the game with a higher initiative, and you're going to have a claim of two, but you're only going to be able to do one challenge type. So you're going to want to be sure that you're going to be able to initiate that challenge successfully. Uh, summons 401 when revealed search the top 10 cards of your deck for a character reveal it add it to your hand and shuffle your deck uh, 7 reserve again low gold low initiative and you're only searching the top 10 cards of your deck um, so that that's dangerous I, I'm not sure how I feel on this card I, I you know you're going fishing the, in the first edition, there were a lot of cards that did this, but you got to search your entire deck. So you're pretty much guaranteed to get what you're looking for. Now you're really taking a chance. You're, you're sacrificing that initiative, getting a moderate gold total, and uh, maybe not getting what you're looking for. Um, so I don't know. I'll, I'll have to play this card more often to really get a feel for how, how I like it. And now we move on to the first character card. Aaron Damfair. 
Oh, he costs three, has three strength with the power icon. In reaction, after you win dominance, put an Ironborn character into play from your dead pile. Well, that's really good, especially when combined with the Baratheons, who are going to probably win a lot of dominance phases. Alanis Greyjoy. Cost three, two power with the intrigue and power icons. Uh, while you are the first player, reduce the reserve value on each opponent's revealed plot card by one. This is another one. Very powerful ability. Balanced by the fact that you have to be that first player. But a very powerful ability in the game we last played. Uh, we saw this come into play again. It was a card into my wife's side of the table. She was the first player. Another player on the game. Um played a plot card with a very low reserve this further reduced it and that player wasn't able to play a lot of cards in their turn they ended up dumping over half of their hand right into their graveyard uh, so that's that's pretty rough asha Greyjoy, five gold warfare power four strength she has stealth and after you win an unopposed challenge in which asha Greyjoy participated stand her uh, so that's really good because she has stealth and remember the goal of this deck is 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 going to be kneeling and keeping kneeled as many of your opponent's characters as possible since you're probably not going to be able to kneel everybody this stealth keyword helps get around that so whoever you don't have were whoever you were not able to kneel um she might be able to just stealth right by and then she gets to stand right back up so uh assuming it's an unopposed challenge so again that's pretty good works really well with this deck uh, we get the Dragonstone Faithful. This just lets you kneel to reduce the cost of the next Baratheon char character by one. Let's see if we can figure out. They had, they had three of those Dragonstone Faithful, three Asha Greyjoys. One Alanis Greyjoy and one Aaron Damphir. The three Dragonstone Faithful is a no-brainer. I don't know what I feel about the three Asha Greyjoys. That, that's a lot. Uh, that's taking up a lot of space in your deck. Um, but let's... Let's take a look at Fiery Followers, another three times, three gold, one warf uh, Warfare and Intrigue Icons, two power. After Dominant Phase begins, stand Fiery Followers. Uh, so that's really good for helping win those Dominant Phases, which will help with um, one of the other cards we saw here. After you win dominance, put an Ironborn character into play from your dead pile. So I almost might have taken away Nasha and put in another one of him. Because this is a really good ability that, that you could take advantage of. Let's see. Now we've got Littlefinger. Five gold, intrigue power, four strength. Uh, after you marshal Little, Littlefinger, draw two cards, and he gives you plus one gold. Uh, he's just a solid card. I think you're going to see in a lot of decks. And they put two of them in this deck. Next, we have two Lord's Port Shipwrights. Uh, Neil Lord's Port Shipwright to choose a Neil location with the printed cost two or lower. Printed three or lower instead if you are the first player. Two gold intrigue. One power. I guess that, you know, I, I haven't seen this card in play a whole lot. I don't know how impactful kneeling one location is going to be. Uh, but certainly good for options. And it's going to add to something the. Baratheons aren't the strongest in the intrigue. Uh, next we have Maester Cresson. They include one of him. Three gold. Power icon. Three strength. Uh, Neo Master Cre Maester Cresson. To choose a condition attachment and discard it from play. Uh, that could be really good. There are a couple of nasty conditions out there. And uh, I like that they included two of him. Two Maester Cressons. One Maester Wendemere. Two gold, power icon, two strength, and he has stealth. So again, given the goal of kneeling, uh, stealth can be very powerful. And they have three Melisandres. Five gold, intrigue and power, four strength. Reaction after you marshal or play a R'hllor card, choose and kneel a character. Limit once per round. And I'm pretty sure that includes her. Because it's a reaction, so it's going to be after you played the card anyway, and she's in play after you play the card. So I'm pretty sure, if I'm reading the rules correctly, and based on other things I've seen people ask on the rules boards, she will trigger herself. So that's very, very interesting. Play her, kneel a character. Play any other R'hllor character, kneel a character. So it fits very well 
with the Baratheon theme of kneeling characters. And uh, they want you to include three, so she's obviously a key to this deck. Next, they also want three Robert Baratheons. Seven gold, uh, warfare power, five strength, intimidate, and renown. Robert Baratheon gets plus one strength for each other kneeling character in play. He's expensive, and the seven cost cards can be tricky to bring into play, but he can get huge fast, um, especially in a melee game, which is how my group generally plays. We generally play four, um, four, you know, four of us together. So, especially if you're going later in the round, so he's actually one of those cards where you might not mind going last or next to last or something, because you're going to have people ahead of you kneeling a bunch of characters and especially if you can control uh, maybe who goes before you if you win initiative and, and you know you can avoid attacks from the uh, the two people that go before you and you go third then they're going to kneel characters fighting each other and that fourth person and every character they kneel to attack boosts Robert Baratheon by one strength um, like he can get he can get sick Fast, And then with some of the other cards we've seen, uh, power him with Melisandre. Uh, again, you're looking at someone who is uh, going to win that Warfare Power Challenge. Uh, then he's going to gain a power himself for winning it. And with Intimidate, if, I don't have the rulebook in front of me, but if I remember correctly, it allows you to kneel uh, as many characters as you won the combat by, maybe. Uh, I could be absolutely mistaken on that uh, I'll if I am I will post an update in the video but he's a he's an incredibly powerful character uh, that said in the game we played he came out got huge um, somebody managed to negate his warfare icon and um, we took him out pretty quick he was he was taken off the field in a brutally efficient manner, um, not as not as brutally efficient as as his brother, who I think we have coming up pretty quick here. Um, but yes, Robert Baratheon, very powerful card. When you're going to want to get into play uh, as fairly quickly as possible with this deck, and one that you're going to want to find a way to keep into play, however possible. Uh, next, we have the Salty Navigator. There are going to be two of those. He gives you plus one reserve value, warfare, two strength, cost two gold. Nothing fancy, but a good way to increase that reserve value. Uh, I think that's the reserve value. That could be initiative. Maybe that's a good way to increase that initiative value, uh, which is very important for this deck. Because, again, if you can control where you go in the turn order based on who you think you can, you can beat or who's not going to attack you, maybe, very important. So... This could be one of those key cards, one of those one of those dark horse cards in helping you win a game. Uh, next we have Selyse Baratheon. They include one of her. Three gold, intrigue power, two strength. She has a challenge action. Pay one gold to choose a Baratheon character. Until the end of the phase, that character gains the intrigue icon. Uh, really, really good, because again, intrigue is not necessarily the Baratheon strength. And imagine slapping this onto... An extremely beefed up Robert Baratheon. You're gonna you're gonna make someone pay. Uh, Sir Davos Seaworth, and they include one Davos Seaworth. So he has four strength. Uh, four he costs four. Has the warfare power icons. Three strength stealth, which as we've explained, could be very useful in this deck. Interrupt when, Dav when Sir Davos Seaworth is killed. Return him to your to your hand instead of placing him in your dead pile. Wow, that's really good. So this is another one of those cards that could just be a solid staple of this deck. Uh, they only give you the one, so finding him could be interesting, but he's definitely worth it. Uh, we have Shireen Baratheon. She's another one they only include one of. Two gold, power icon, one strength. Interrupt when Shireen Baratheon is killed. Choose a kneel a character. So she's essentially there to die in a warfare challenge to get that kneel in. Maybe to help beast up Robert or for whatever else. Uh, now we have Stannis Baratheon. Six gold, 
warfare power, five strength, and his ability works phenomenally well with his brother. Each player cannot stand more than two characters during the standing phase. Now that includes you as well. Um, so you're gonna, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more cards in this deck geared towards standing your characters. Uh, Asha, excellent example. She's going to go ahead and stand herself. So you can use her, if you go early in the initiative, use her, uh, make sure that it's an unopposed challenge, and then you still have her as a defender. So incredibly useful card. In the game we played last, he came out, and we knew Robert was coming, and he died a very nasty death. And his death, I felt, helped show the intricacies that you can get into with playing cards in this game. And I'm not going to get into it here, but I'm going to be doing a re an overall review of the card game soon uh, where I go into that. So Stanith, Stanith's useful card, but he is going to be a target. So when you play him... You're going to want to see if you have, try to have some way to, to keep him alive. And we're going to round out the characters with two Theon Greyjoys. Four gold, warfare and power, three strength. He has the stealth keyword. In reaction, after you win an unopposed challenge in which the Theon Greyjoy is participating, he gains one power. So it's kind of a weakened uh, renown, but he was almost instrumental in my wife winning the last game we played. Um, he was, for some reason, we just couldn't kill him. He kept using stealth, you know, to sneak in on somebody who had almost no defenders for either power or warfare. And he ended up with a stack of power icon, uh, power tokens on him. So I'm going to close this and scroll down as we go down to the attachments. We've got Lightbringer, two gold weapon, has the Relore keyword. Now, does that work with Melisandre? Let's see. Uh, after you marshal or play a Relore card. So, Lightbringer does count. So you play Lightbringer while Melisandre is in play, you're going to kneel somebody. It can only be played in Baratheon characters. If attached character is Stannis Baratheon, and gains Renown. Reaction, after attached character gains one or more power, stand it. Limit once per phase. Not my personal favorite weapon in the game, but given the theme of this deck... I think incredibly useful. They include, have you include one of those. And they have you include two little birds. Not a surprise given the Baratheon's weakness in, in intrigue. This gives you the character an intrigue icon for one gold. Uh, Milk of the Poppy. This is a, a three. I think this is one you're going to see in a lot of decks. I think this is just going to be a staple. Uh, condition, Terminal. Uh, treat attached character as if its printed text box were blank, uh, except for traits. Again, there's a lot of powerful characters in this game. Uh, just imagine Robert Stannis. Um, all houses have characters that are that nasty. So I, I almost guarantee you're going to see every deck have at least two Milk of the Poppies, if not three. They're just too useful to not include. Uh, now we move on to the events. They want three Consolidation of Powers, a one gold event. In marshalling action, choose and kneel up to four total strength characters, a worth of characters controlled by the same player, then choose one of those characters and have it gain one power. So you're giving up one power, but you're kneeling four strength worth of characters, which could be, you know, any, any combination of one to four characters. Uh, given the theme of this deck, again, incredibly useful. Uh, ours is the Fury. It looks like they want one of those. Two gold. Play only during a challenge in which you are the defending player. Action. Choose a kneeling Baratheon character you control. That character is now participating as a defender. If you win this challenge, stand that character. Imagine having a beasted up Robert Baratheon. You've already gone. He's participated in, in his warfare challenge. Destroyed somebody. Uh, now, all of a sudden, he's also defending in a warfare challenge. That's That's crazy. And you're going to stand him. So you, you either, if you haven't gone yet in the turn, you're going to get to use him again. Or you now have a standing, beefed up Robert Baratheon for the dominance phase. Uh, scene in Flames. One gold event. Relore. So again, going to activate Melisandre. You play only if you control a Relore character. Challenge action. Choose an opponent and look at his or her hand. Then choose and discard one card from that hand. So it, it gives you, again, the Baratheons are weak in Intrigue. This essentially gives you a 
Intrigue plus win, because you get to choose the card for one gold. That is not bad. Uh, seen in Flames, they want two. It's not bad. I, I can almost see including a third in there. Now we move on to the locations. Uh, two gold, Chamber of the Painted Table. They want you to have one of these. Uh, reaction, after you win Dominance, Neil Chamber of the Painted Table to move one power from an opponent's faction card to your own. So it gives you an extra power challenge win in the Dominance phase, which you're probably gonna, going to win a lot of. Next we have three Dragonstones. Zero gold, limited, Neil Dragonstone, port to reduce the cost of the next Brathian character you marshal this phase by one. All the, I think all the houses have a card like this, and I think you're just going to see three of these in every deck. They're reducing the cost of a character by one is incredibly useful, especially since your power cards are those seven gold, and getting that seven gold can be tricky. The Iron Throne. Two gold location. Increases your reserve value by one. And the Iron Throne contributes eight strength to your total dominance. Almost ensuring you're going to win Dominance phase by itself. They want you to include one, so uh, having a way to get it into play is going to be key. Um, this this could really, really shut down the game based on some of the other abilities we've seen. Uh, then they want three King's Road. Uh, you're going to see three of these in every deck. Uh, they want three the Red Keep, three gold... The red keep contributes two strength to your side during any power challenge in which you control a participating character. And when the challenge phase ends, if you have not lost a power challenge that round, near the red keep to draw two cards. Incredibly useful card, especially for the Baratheons who are going to be very good in power challenges. Um, especially in this deck where you've got all that kneeling power and then the ability to stealth out whoever's remaining. Um, again, this could be an excellent way to gain that power in power challenges, and then to draw cards at the end of the phase. You might have to discard a card or two, but at least you are keeping your hand primed with the exact cards you will need going forward in the next phase. Uh, and then three Rose Roads, which I think you're just going to see in every deck. Because um, zero plus one gold is limited, but that's okay. So I think you're just going to see three of these. Incredibly useful card. No reason not to include it. Um... Then we've got some extra cards here. Uh, treat each goal on the kingdoms revealed. Uh, if it was, uh, keep, treat each revealed kingdom and each revealed edict card. Uh, plot as if it were zero, the gold value. I'm going to say that again. Treat the base gold value on each revealed kingdom and each revealed edict card as if it were zero. Um, that sounds nasty. I have yet to see it impact the game. Um, could be crushing if you know you're playing somebody maybe that plays a lot of warfare cards but in the game that I've seen so far I, I haven't seen it impact anything wildfire assault this is one of those cards that you, you, sounds really good but you don't want to be stuck with it if you're ahead late in the game and it's only going to impact you that is my one problem with wildfire assault if the game goes that full seven turns and you've still got this in your hand and you happen to be ahead then you're only hurting yourself. And confiscate. When revealed, choose an attachment and discard it from play. That's a good one. I, I think that's one that you're going to see in a lot of decks. Uh, just because there are a lot of nasty negative enchantments. And there you have it. Their first example deck. I think, it's, I think it looks really good. I, I think someone at my table will definitely be playing this or a variation of this. Uh, once we get the three starter sets, I cannot wait for this game to finally be released. You know, we're having fun with that one starter set we have, but I'm really, really looking forward to being able to make some complex decks and see what we can do with it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and subscribe if you did, and I'll talk to you next time.